family. This is Pastor King here. I would like to thank you for your support and for being a part of what God is doing through our ministry. At Christ Covenant Chapel, lives are being changed, broken marriages are being restored, sicknesses are being healed, people's lives are advancing. Listen, God is doing great things among us. You are so appreciated and I hope our ministry and the content we share here is adding value to your life. We are a living spring to a thirsty world, a place where imperfect people find true joy and genuine friendship. At CCC, no perfect people are allowed. We are a family-oriented church where everybody is somebody. We want to produce life-giving content to help as many people as possible change their lives and positively impact their generation. This is what our ministry is all about. Thank you for supporting us on Instagram, Facebook, and right here on YouTube. You are getting ready to listen to a transformational message. Thank you for your prayers and support. We love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Be blessed. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1 through 4. Jeremiah 18, verse 1 through 4. We're reading from the New King James Version. The word of the Lord, which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there, somebody say there, amen. There I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and there he was making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. Heavenly Father, we thank you. When your disciples came to you and said, teach us how to pray, you said to them, when you pray, say, our Father. You didn't say we should say our God. You said our Father. So this morning, we have come to our Father. And we ask that you will feed us with the bread of heaven. Let your word come to us and let it not return to you void until it has accomplished the purpose for which you sent it forth. I ask that you will use me as the pen of a skillful writer to inscribe wisdom upon the heart of men and women. We thank you for your presence. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. This is our year of transformation. As you heard from the clip, it is our month of excellence. So basically what we're going to be doing today is just lay a foundation for all of us and then we'll continue as the month goes by. Is that okay? Yeah, so we're just going to be throwing things at you uh, this morning. I want to speak on the subject, excellence is the standard. Excellence is the standard. Excellence is the standard. We heard this morning in the video that you are not born with excellence. So some people were not born with it and others don't have it. So others can be excellent. You, you know, when you are born with something and somebody else is not born with that thing, it means that person can do something that you cannot do because they are born with it, right? Am I, am I, yeah, because they, they, they are born with it, but you are not born with excellence. It is an attitude generated by a spirit. Amen. Amen. And one thing I want you to remember all month and through the rest of your life is that for you as a Christian or as a believer, you shouldn't head to work any day 
intending to achieve mediocre results. All right, there are people whose excellence are, are compartmentalized. I don't even know if it's, it's the right word I want to use. So they are excellent in certain areas of their lives. And then some other areas, they just don't care. So they can go to work and do things excellently well. When you look inside their car, it's like a tornado has gone through it. You get what I'm saying? But you see, when you do that, it means that excellence is not you. It's not part of your life. Because that's why I tell people that, listen, leadership in church is different from leadership at work. You can be a great manager at U.S. Bank and not be able to manage people in church. Because when you go to U.S. Bank, there are regulations, there are set rules. Things are written out for you. When somebody does this three times, you do this two times, and then if they don't do, you fire them. And it's easy. You can say you can follow those rules and become a great manager. But to lead people in church, I mean, someone will look at you and say, you know, I'm not being paid for this. Don't stress me. Hello. And you have to lead them and get the work done. What I'm saying is that, but if that person has the spirit of excellence and that is who they are, you don't have to hit them on the head to get them to do right because that is, in the, it's an innate thing within them. That's who they are. Hallelujah. You see, we need to, and I'm, and I'm going to prove from scripture, we need to become people of excellence. Give me John chapter 10 and verse number 10. Let me show you something. John chapter 10 and verse number 10. Bible says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Give, give it to me in the King James. Let me show you something. Now, the thief he's talking about here is not the thief who comes to steal from you like another human being. He's using it as a simile or a metaphor to talk about the devil. Am I, am I right? No, no, just nod your head. So, yeah, even if you don't believe it, just. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. This is Jesus speaking, right? He says the thief comes and when he comes, his intention is to steal to kill and to destroy. But I have come. He's contrasting what he came to do with what the enemy came to do. Now let me ask you a question. We are a teaching church, so we, we, we try to teach. The enemy did not come to kill, steal, or destroy. Let me ask you, is there any killing going on in heaven? It's not a trick question. Is there any killing going on in heaven? No. Is there any stealing going on in heaven? Is there any destroying going on in heaven? So he's not talking about heaven. He's talking about things happening here on earth. Are we okay on that? The thief did not come but to steal, kill, and destroy here on earth. So if Jesus is going to contrast that, he's not talking about heaven. He's not talking about eternal life. I'm, I'm stretching something because I'm going to make a point. A lot of the time when we teach this text, we teach it as if Jesus is talking about eternal life. That I came to give you eternal life. When you go into glory. That we, no, no, no. He was talking about life here on earth. He said, but I came that you might have life and have it what? More abundant. Jesus wants you to have an abundant life. So he says that he has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things that pertain to what? And God. Now, that life is not life in heaven. It's life here on earth. He's giving us all things. 
that pertains to life and godliness. Does money pertain to life? Then he's giving it to you. Even the, 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 the. Does good health pertain to life? Then it is your portion. Does a peace of mind belong to life? Then that is your portion. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it is love, power, and a sound mind. So sound mind comes with salvation. It's a package. So God wants you to have an abundant life. I know somebody will have No, no. He wants you to drive a nice car. The car you drive shouldn't embarrass God. See, I can talk like this because, you know, I'm just saying. Hey, that's what I should tell you. If I was driving some raggedy thing, I can't say that to Listen, you know, let, let me tell you something. <laughs> Mark Christy, there are certain things, that is why, like for us pastors, eh, that's why Bible says he will judge us more, you know, seriously than, than people in the congregation. Because let me tell you something. Paul says that in Galatians, he says, and they glorified God because of me. All right, so for us, when we do certain things, it brings embarrassment to the God we serve. And then there are certain things that the moment you do it, you lose the authority to speak on it. Thank God for the grace of God. Thank God for the mercies of God. Thank God for being a, another chance God. But, but it, you, you lose the authority. To, so, when, when, when your life doesn't look like abundance, and you are saying every day, God is an abundant God, but we are looking at your life and it is not a reflection of what thou sayest. Am I telling the truth? So, God says that if I'm, a, I'm an abundant God, then I'm going to give you life and give you life more abundantly. I told you in the one of the things that I love about Jesus Christ, the Bible says that the people looked at him and they were they, they marveled. Why? Because they said he did everything well. well. So what we are saying is that if you are a believer, blood washed, Holy Ghost filled, don't go to work, be talking in tongues and do a shoddy job. You are embarrassing the king. So now people who don't pray, they are doing better work for the employer. Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Bendo, they were not serving a Christian king. Daniel served three kings. Darius, Sarius, and Nebuchadnezzar. And Bible said he did everything excellently well under an ungodly king. Am I telling the truth? You know, at the end of the day, whatever we do, I want to say this, you may not like it, but whatever we do, it reflects on our God. Number one, what is excellence? I only have three points for you. I'll get out of here with you. What is excellence? What is excellence? Please write this down. Excellence is zero tolerance for mediocrity. Excellence is zero tolerance for mediocre. You have no tolerance for mediocrity. I remember I had a meeting with one sister today and please, um, I'm, I'm just using for example, I'm not mentioning your name, so please. And uh, we had to go somewhere. So I said to her, let's go. And she said, 
Are we going in your car? I said, no, you are driving. You are driving. And so I, I, I opened the driver's, the, the other side to help me. He said, oh, Pastor, hold, let me clean up. I said, you sitting like this. Me too, I'm sitting like this. Let, let's, let's sit in like this and go. McDonald's, Burger King, Chifile, all kinds. I lie not. I stand on this holy ground. I lie not. I said, Pastor, let me clean. I said, please, this is how you live. Let's, let's go. Let's drive it and let's go. Oh, was she embarrassed. And I made sure that she was embarrassed. But you see, when she came to my office, neatly dressed, wonderful. She comes to church looking, everything is on point. But I'm asking, you spend so much time in your car and it's like a jungle. I mean, like seriously, you know, it's, it's, you see, and, and, and this woman is single. That's the sad part. So, single means that she's hoping and believing a man will marry her. And I look inside your car like this. I don't want to come home. So now, people come and they are expelled because mediocrity expels excellence. Mediocrity, listen, excellence is a language. When the people who understand that language, when they speak it, it draws them to you. Hold on for a second. Don't do what you see people do. come not everybody is standing you didn't understand it so the only people who stood up are those who understood what I said the people who understand the language of excellence they are drawn to act please sit down so when when you don't get invitation to the table of excellence it means you don't understand the language of excellence that is why you were not invited So now, pastor, this person acting disorderly and without any excellence and their marriage is postponed and postponed and postponed. And you know what we do? We blame it on the devil. But the devil didn't do anything. You lack excellence. Excellence is producing the highest quality. It means you surpass ordinary standards. Producing the highest quality. You know what a standard is? Dictionary says standard is something set up and established by authority as a rule for the measure of value or quality. When they say something is standard, it means that it is something that is set up and established by authority as a rule for the measure of value or quality. So ordinary standard simply means living a mediocre life. Nothing mediocre ever becomes great. Nothing mediocre ever becomes great. What we are talking about, ladies and gentlemen, is that excellence simply means you are maximizing the potential that God placed in you before he released you to come to planet earth. You are maximizing that potential. So it is not, you see, Jesus Christ gave a parable. He said a great man, rich man was leaving and he gave talents to his servants. One he gave five, one he gave two, one he gave one. Right? And he gave it to them. Bible makes a very interesting phrase. According to their ability. When he came back, the five had produced five. The two had produced two. The one said, I know you are a wicked 
master. So I put your talent in a handkerchief. I dug the ground and I buried it. And the master said, the least you could have done was put it in the bank and get me some interest. That was the least. But you see, pastor, when the master was rewarding them, I dare you to go home and research it. He gave them the same reward. The five and the two received the same reward. You would have said that the one made five. Why didn't you give him more reward than the one? No, because the one who had five, God knew his ability and he showed that this is his ability. The one who had two knew his ability. God. And the best thing of that text is this. They all produce up to the highest maximum of their potential. And the master said, you have done well. So excellence is producing to your highest ability. That is why you can't compare to anybody. Just produce to your highest. Is this the best you could do? In that position, as a CNA, as a nurse, as a teller, as a banker, as an investor, what nurse, doctor, whatever you do in that office, is this the best you could do today? Listen, life is short for you to live a mediocre life. Leave it all on the table. Leave it all on the table. Are we doing okay so far? Use it to the best of your ability for the glory of God. You see, listen, CCC, we have done so much with so little for so long that we can do anything with nothing. Oh yeah, sometimes people see the things we do in this church and they think we have millions sitting in the account. We don't. We have just done so much with so little that we believe anything is possible. Are you hearing me? To see the manifestation of God in our life, the first thing is order, excellence. Let me say something to shock some of you. It is not how hard you do it. It is how well you do it. Do it well. Because one of the distinguishing characteristics of a great person is excellence. Because excellence brings the best out of you on a consistent basis. Consistently. So a, a choir leader cannot stand here and sing wonderful today. And then tomorrow we are like, is that her? consistent. Amen. Listen, and I'm not saying this to be braggadocious or to say I'm better than anybody. Pastor, anytime I have a microphone to speak, I don't care where it is. I speak like this is my life's message. I, give, I leave it all on the table. I will sweat, I will pant, I will do, I, it, I, I preach it because you know what? I am doing it for my master. I'm doing it as unto the Lord. You can be driving very fast, but if you are going the wrong direction, you are going nowhere to happen. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Whatever your hand finds to do, what? He says, if your hand finds what to do, come on, talk to me. Whatever. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it how? With all your might for there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going it's in your bible i didn't put it there he says you are going somewhere if nobody kills you you will die by yourself he says you are going into the grave and before you get into the grave do things well before you go this is the wise man Whatever your hand finds to do. If your hands have found you to be a business owner, do it well. You are working for somebody, do it well. The master said, if you don't handle other people's things well, nobody will give you your own. In that apartment, treat it like it's your house. Don't trash the place because you are hoping one day you'll buy your own house. Then I'll do it well. No, you will never buy that house. 
Because that apartment is somebody else's investment. It's their property. Treat it right. Somebody will treat yours right. That business you are stealing hours. Little here, little there. Poco a poco. Little here, little there. Little here, little there. It is somebody's investment. I know you forget about that. Colossians 3, 23 to 24. And whatever you do, do it heartily, cheerfully, as to the Lord and not to men. Ah, I love this scripture. I'm sorry I have to wrap up. He says, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. He didn't, you know he's not only talking about church. Please give me the scripture. Go back to verse 23. And whatever you do, whatever you do, the accountant, do it heartily, heartily. Ask unto the Lord. Do you know he's saying that it, does, it means that there are some things you are doing not directly necessarily doing it unto God, like serving in church or doing it. But he says whatever you do, do it as if you are doing it for God. Like is a simile comparing to do. do it as if you are doing it unto the Lord. When you come here, you are ushering people. Don't think you are ushering people, just opening doors for humanity. Do it, you are doing it for God. When you sit behind the, those machines, don't just press anything just because they have put you there. Do it because you are doing it unto the Lord. He sees in private, he rewards openly. When you stand here to sing, sing like you are singing unto the Lord. If you are summoned to call people, call like you are calling unto the Lord. Why? Because we serve an excellent God. You know, excellence is in the details. Anybody heard the name of Samuel Kathy? died, I think, in 2014. He is the founder and the chairman of Chief Elaine. Pastor. He sat in a board meeting. How close with this. And his board was telling him, we need to expand. We need new locations. We need to get big. We need to get this. And he rebuked them and he said, you know what? Let us do things better. When we do things better, customers will demand that we become bigger. Quote, unquote. He said, let us do things excellent. When things are done excellently well, it is not we who will demand more locations. Customers will demand that we expand. And they did things excellently well, and customers demanded they expand. Do you know it is the most profit-making fast food in the whole world? And they don't work on Sunday. When he started and said, we will not work on Sunday, experts said to him that Sunday is when fast food make more money. If you say you won't work on Sunday, you won't make money. He said, Sunday is for God. We will go to church. God. They make more money, about five million more than any other fast food every month. Chief Lee. Because when you go to Chief Lee, they, you go to other fast foods, it is like you are inconveniencing them. Like we want you to move, move, move. You go to Chick-fil-A, it's like they are happy they were waiting for you. They are glad you came. They treat you like they are, they were being, they've been waiting for you the whole time. See, see, see. Let's treat people like because they belong to the family of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you hearing me, somebody? Be sweet, be nice, laugh. And, and I'm not saying we should pretend. Do it because we care. You know Minnesota nice. They see you and they say, they want the bar party. You are as fake as a, a $3 bill. Listen, when we do things better, customers will demand that we become bigger. Let's love people. Let's care for people. Let's, let's, and let's do it because we 
Okay. Don't do it because you. You know, I'm sure somebody said, what has that got to do with Jeremiah 118? I'm out of time, so I have to go. I was going to bring you there, but I'll bring you there before we. The master was creating something. Minister Lutte. And Bible says the clay got mad in the hand of the master. The clay didn't say anything. The observers didn't say anything. The master, being the excellent God he is, looked at it and said, you know what? This is not up to standard. So he himself decided, I'm going to make it again. As what seems fit to my eyes. That means before I went into manufacturing this, clay, this, this pot, I had a destination in mind and this doesn't look like it. And until it looks like what I want it to look like, I will not stop working on it. That is why he's still working on you. So the master himself went back to the clay and did it again. And the most important phrase in that text for today is that he did it as to what seems fit for the master. So when he was done, it became a masterpiece. What is that? It was a piece of the master. Listen, autograph your work with excellence because it's going to speak for you. It's a reflection of you. It's a reflection of who you are. It's a reflection of what. How, so at the end of the day, when you are not there, we should miss you. Because your work speaks for you. A piece of the master. When I was working with my team to, 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 to bring out the video, and, and by the way, sometimes people think that these things, we outsource them. No, no, it's in-house. Every word produced. We did it here. I, I wrote the script and I, and I gave to her. I said, we, we are working on this. We are working on this to get it right. The timing and everything. This is it. And, and they were editing and they were editing. They, don't they do a fantastic job for me? They make me look real good. So the time was over and they said, okay, so we have to take out some things. And, and I said, you can take out anything. Just don't take out a masterpiece and a piece of the master. Because that is what I heard from God. Keep that. This year, the master wants to finish with us and we become a piece of him. Excellent. Excellent. Orderly. Beautiful. People look at it and say, ah, the one who did you, he did a good job. Is that good English? Did made you something. You get it. Can we rise up on our feet? I'm done. My friends, I pray that today's broadcast has been a blessing to you to empower you to live a life of impact. If this content has blessed you and helped you, if this content is adding value to your life, I only ask one thing of you. I want you to share it with someone else. Our mission is to help as many people as possible and we can't do that without your help. It means the world to me that you share it. God has a life of impact for you. Keep on making impact. I'm out of time. I've got to leave you now. But you can also connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and on our website. I will see you next time. Until then, continue impacting your generation. Shalom.